Mm. Hey, Coach. How we doing? Good. We'll start with any thoughts you have and then open it up for some questions. All right. Please bear with me. I broke my glasses this morning. I have some new ones on. Um, my old ones were bifocals. I think these are called transitional. I, I don't like them. So I'm going to have to try to bear through this the best I can. Um, I'll kind of start backwards from the most recent um, news that's been going on with our program and kind of go through the spring um, and then uh, open it up for questions. You know, obviously, uh, Hunter coming back uh, is obviously big news for us. I thought that Hunter and his agent, Kevin Bradbury, navigated the NBA draft process is about as meticulously and well-planned as, as, as someone could. Um, Hunter received a great deal of positive feedback from the NBA following all of his workouts and interviews. Um, Hunter left Wake Forest towards the, uh, m towards mid April and, uh, went to work out in New York city with his agency lift, uh, all the way to the end of May. Um, during that time, my staff and I had a very uh, open and collaborative um, line of communication with Hunter, uh, his agent, Kevin Bradbury, who I think is outstanding, and his parents, um, Travis and Jessica. Uh, Coach Mackey and Coach Nichols went up to uh, New York City late May and um, visited Hunter and watched him work out. I went to Chicago in mid-May to the Combine for two days where I visited with uh, Saul Hunter, his agent, and uh, and his dad. Um, Hunter worked out for three NBA teams before the Combine, and he worked out for three NBA teams after the Combine, and he was in San Antonio to work out for them uh, on the day that he decided to uh, come back to college and then uh, came home. Um, during his time away from Wake Forest, you know, Hunter completed all of his academic responsibilities for the spring semester. Uh, he put himself in position to come back if he chose to do so. And that's a credit to Hunter, uh, his family, Jane Caldwell, his instructors, and his agent for making that happen. I want you, I never pressured Hunter to come back to school. Um, throughout the entire process, I encouraged Hunter to uh, realize his dream of playing in the NBA. Every time we spoke or text each other, um, Hunter and I never talked about him coming back to Wake Forest throughout the entire time he was in the draft. Um, I watched, I wanted him to be 100% committed to the NBA draft along with everyone around him, you know, me and my staff included. I was prepared to have a conversation uh, of him returning to school when the opportunity presented itself, if it presented itself. And around about May 25th, I began having multiple conversations with his dad and Kevin Bradbury, his agent, about the possibility of Hunter coming back to school, which they initiated. Um, after my phone call with his dad on the night of the 28th and with his agent on the morning of the 29th in the Charlotte airport, I felt pretty confident that he was coming back. Um, his agent texted me on the 29th in the morning, told me that um, – we needed to talk. I was on my way to Charlotte with my family to fly to Iowa to see my mom. Of course, he called when I was going through security, which never fails. And so I missed the call, went straight panic mode, um, got my wife. It was the first time I've flown commercial with my wife. So she was in a wheelchair. So I was trying to navigate all that. Got down to the side after we got through security and called him. So my wife was sitting there by herself in a wheelchair and all these airport personnel kept coming up and asking her if she was okay and does she need help? And she kept pointing at me that no, that guy needs help. Um, and so um, we got through it. Uh, I had a couple hours there on the uh, when we flew. I didn't have my, I couldn't make calls. So even though I felt good about it, I was still, you know, I was still a little bit nervous. First time Hunter and I spoke about him coming back, he called me five minutes before he announced. Um, I was driving down the road from the hospital to my hometown. Uh, he had just got back from San Antonio uh, where he was that, that morning. We had texted each other a bunch, but that was the first time that I talked to him. 
Why is Hunter coming back? It just was not an easy decision for Hunter and his family. Uh, Hunter loves Wake Forest, but he wants to play in the NBA like anybody would with his talent. Um, he was going to get drafted this month, bottom line. He was going to get drafted. Um, but often how you go in the league is how you're perceived, you know, between a first-round, second-round pick. Hunter wants to be a first-round pick in the draft uh, next year at this time, which everyone around him, me included, believe that will happen. And he wants to lead Wake Forest to the – NCAA tournament. Um, Hunter is so much farther ahead than 99% of the players in college basketball who return to college after this year's draft process. Why do I say that? Because most of those players returning to college didn't get as many workouts, if any, that he got. And a lot of those guys weren't even invited to the combine. Hunter has the answers to the test, you know, by the way he trained, performed in his workouts and handled his interviews and process the feedback now, he comes back to put that knowledge and information to use. Um, the returning players, uh, you know, obviously Cameron's coming back. I was really excited uh, for, to have him back for his senior year, averaging two years in a row, he's averaged double figures in the league. I believe he's a potential ACC player. I thought he was on that path till he got hurt, you know, this year. Um, I thought he displayed an incredible amount of toughness and team uh, had a team attitude to finish the year uh, playing through an injury. Chose not to have surgery after a bunch of, uh, you know, consultation between doctors and surgeons and what it looked like now, what it looked like 10 years from now. Um, it was just one of those things that, that he chose not to do. Uh, he wants to uh, He wants to have a full summer of working out to prepare for his senior year. He wants to be a leader because he is a leader. He just felt like those things couldn't be done if he wasn't out there. Uh, he wants to play in the tourney his senior year. And uh, so, you know, a lot of that went into his decision uh, to not have the surgery. Efton Reed's, I believe, a potential ACC player this upcoming season will be the first time since his freshman year that he's played an entire season major minutes. And so I'm looking forward to him having – a great year. He was in a tough situation last year. I thought he handled it flawlessly. You know, he didn't get a scrimmage at Georgetown. He didn't get a play against Alabama in a charity game. He missed seven games before he really got a play. And so um, I'm just really excited that he's going to have a full year. He's the anchor of our defense. Uh, he can score the ball back to the basket facing up. And uh, I just look for him to have a great year. And he's a great leader. I thought Parker Fredrickson had a Really good freshman year. He exceeded my expectations that I had for him going into the season. And not that they were low. It's just I thought he had a really good year. He's so much more than a shooter. Uh, he plays very good positional defense. He's got active hands. He rebounds. He moves the ball on offense. He's not a ball stopper. He made 53s as a freshman. And that's going two for 27 down the stretch. Um, he's a leader. Players respect him. And um, I, I look for him to have a really good year. Just had his tonsils out um, a couple weeks ago. It's been hard for him. And so um, he'll be a little behind when he gets back, but nothing major. Marcus Marion's coming back. Really excited about him. Uh, I thought he was playing really well in his role up until January, uh, getting about eight or nine minutes a game. And then Damari came back, and that kind of that that kind of cut into his minutes. Um, but he handled it like a champion. Uh, continued to practice hard, uh, be a great teammate. I thought he had a really good spring. He's really he's really his body is uh, really blown up, and so uh, looking forward to uh, Marcus coming back. New players, you know, Juke Harris seems like we signed him two or three years ago. Um, he has really, really blossomed. Um, I think I haven't measured him yet, but he looks to be an inch, inch and a half taller than when we first signed him. He's le definitely over six seven. He's up here all the time working out. Um, he's lifting all the time, and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to having him. As you guys know, he was at every game he could be at. He really bought into our program. Him and his family. Uh, Trayvon Spillers was the first guy that we took out of the portal 
uh, played against us again when we played App State in the NIT. I had never seen Trayvon play uh, up until that point, even though he did play for Pat Smith at Moberly. And I used to be Pat's assistant at Barton County Community College a long time ago. Um, he's a really good player, guys. He's got great energy. He's got a motor. Um, he can score around the basket. He can defend, rebound. Uh, I told him to go back and YouTube uh, Stacy Augman and watch the Plastic Man and try to emulate his game after him. Um, he didn't even know who Stacy Augman was, which doesn't surprise me, showing my age. Um, yeah, everybody go like this. Uh, um, you know, I just really like him. He's got great personality. Uh, Devin Cosby, who we recruited a year ago, but went to Alabama, uh, outstanding shooter, uh, coming off a foot injury. Uh, he'll be, a, I think he'll be able to go by mid July live. He's in, he's, he's in the gym shooting now. It's just, there's no reason to, for us to be trying to push that here in, in the summer, but I think he'll be able to go, you know, contact probably mid July. Um, really good player, great size. He's gotten so much bigger than when I saw him in high school. Um, he'll be a guy that's going to play a lot of minutes. Uh, Omaha Blues, uh, Kind of like uh, McDonald, like uh, Hunter, you know, former McDonald's All American. Um, you don't unbecome a McDonald's All American. Everybody loves to use that quote. Um, like I said, you know, he went there for a Big Mac. We got him for a Happy Meal. Um, really good kid, great energy. You guys are gonna like his personality. He too was hurt, um, hurt his foot back in um, oh early May, um, working out. He'll be fine. He's uh he's in a boot. He's shooting. He'll be available probably mid to late July. I'm not pushing it with any of these guys. There's no reason to. Uh, but he's out there in the gym every day. He's already here. Uh, Trayvon, Devin, and Omaha are already here. Uh, Ty Johnson got here over the weekend. Fast. I mean, fast with that ball. Can really pass it. Really unselfish. Really defends. I was very impressed with him when I watched him on film. Uh, during the year. Uh, he's got good personality, good teammate. I'm really excited to to have him. And then Churchill Abbas will be here in a couple weeks, week and a half. He um, DePaul's on the uh, quarter system. And so he's not quite done with his, uh, his spring uh, quarter, but he'll come right away. Uh, really excited about him. Great potential. Plays extremely hard, very athletic, physical and strong. Got a, uh, I got a lot of friends in the Big East that uh, spoke very, uh, very highly of him. Um, Non-conference schedule, we're at Xavier to, uh, in honor of Skip Prosser. Uh, it'll be announced soon here. We're going to play Michigan in Greensboro in a neutral game, um, which gives us a chance for a quad one to quad two game because if it's neutral, it's one through 50 quad one and 51 to 100 for quad two. If it's a home game, it's one through 30 and then 31 to 75. So um, for us, metrically, it's a better game. I'm really appreciative of Dusty um, to do this. Dusty and I have known each other a long time. Got a lot of respect for him. It'll be a good game in Greensboro. Uh, we, we're in uh, Disney with uh, Florida, Minnesota, and Wichita State. I don't know that matchup yet. And then we're obviously in the SEC Challenge, which will put us on the road. Our home schedule is Duke, Carolina, NC State, Virginia, Notre Dame, Pitt, Florida State, Georgia Tech, Boston College, and Stanford. Our away games are Duke, NC State, Miami, Clemson, Virginia Tech, Louisville, Syracuse, SMU, Stanford, Cal. So, yes, we are going to style Cal, Stanford, and SMU this year, which doesn't surprise me. Um, we have, by our analytics metrics that we use, we have projected on this schedule maybe 14 quad one opportunities, seven quad twos, 21, 22 opportunities, the same as we had last year. If I go back and look, we had 21 opportunities before we played app in the in the NIT. Uh, summer is very, very busy. Uh, we got team camp this week uh, starting on Thursday. We have 52 high schools from six states. We got 92 teams. 67 varsity, 25 JVs. We got 1,100 high school kids here. And 600 of those kids will be staying in the dorms. 
Our eight weeks of summer workouts start a week from today. We got individual camp June 24th to the 27th. It's already sold out. And then we had seven recruiting windows from May, June, and July, which makes no sense. So um, we just did an evaluation period in May, which we've never had ever. Um, tomorrow I'll go to the NBA camp in Orlando for two days. Then we have two high school evaluations here, periods in June, um, two weekends back to back, two AAU evaluation weekends in July, and then the NCAA Academy, plus coach your team. And so um, it's a busy time. Um, I made the mistake of, I counted up how many nights I've been in a hotel since uh, August when I went to Kuwait um, at the end of here of May, I was 115. Um, already obviously I got a lot more to go and so um, it's been a busy time I'm really I think we did a really good job uh, in, in the portal and in high school recruiting um, really uh, my staff did an unbelievable job they're great Matt and you know he did a great job and Jason and BJ and and Tynus and Demetrius everybody's involved Mike Muse, Frank uh, Christopher Darnell everybody's involved in recruiting the whole staff and so even Mike Starkey, Mark Armour, our, our trainer. So we've had a good uh, a good run here and uh, looking forward to our to our season upcoming. Any questions? Steve, you just went ahead and ditched the glasses today, it looks like. I can't read. I I gotta get these glasses fixed. I'm gonna blame my wife. I asked her, I handed them to her this morning to clean them. She broke them, so it's her fault. Um these actually are a little more stylish, you know, but I can't, I mean, I can hardly see you. So they're not very good. Um, go ahead. In regards to Hunter, you said that he has the answers to the test uh, in terms of next year's NBA draft. What does that mean he needs to kind of work on over the next 12 months? And how does that impact what you want to do on the court with your team in the 2024, 25 season? Well, some a good question, Les. And, um, I kind of start backwards. It's not going to impact our team. I wouldn't do anything. You know, we're not going to do anything. He's not going to do anything that's not going to hurt our team. I mean, he's the one of the, he's the best, one of the best players returning in the country. Um, as far as the answers to the test, that's between him and me and in the NBA. Um, there's some things that, you know, we share and there's some things that we don't. I feel like I share a lot, but I feel like uh, those kind of things are, are things that, um, are between him and, and the NBA and me and his agent and his family. And so, um, you know, I, I just think that that's something that he knows that he's got to work on and, and we're going to help him do it. But the number one goal is always to win games, but that's why he came back, you know, too. He wants to win and he wants to go to the tournament and, um, you know, he can cement his legacy here with that. Obviously, he's going to have the ball in his hands more. One of my biggest frustrations last year was the usage rate wasn't as high as it needed to be. Um, that's a little twofold. I think that's some on him because he hadn't been the alpha male till he got here. And so I think sometimes he just – I thought he needed to go get the ball more. And um, kind of like Jake at times, you know, Hunter's a very unselfish player. And then I think some of it too was our guys not doing a very good job of getting him the ball in the right places. And we've, we've corrected that issue. And so um, he will have the ball in his hands a lot. And um, and so I'm looking forward to that. Go ahead, Essex. Morning, Coach. How are you? Morning. In terms of Hunter and the end of the season, when it's very up in air, whether he's he's going to, the, you know, going to stay in the draft or come back, how much does that complicate the portal situation for you when you're having to – Think about is Hunter going to come back or not and how you then plan for all that. Well, it's hard, you know, because if you say – you go out and recruit and you say, well, Hunter's not coming back, every coach that calls the kid right after me tells him that he is coming back. And so it's a, it's a difficult situation. Um, you know, if I say he's coming back, then we aren't getting him. And so um, I've never really tr probably worried too much about that. I've always – Essex – just attacked it by trying to sign the best players that we could get. Obviously, there's a um, 
there's another uh, area of recruiting that you have to real that you have to uh manage as well and that's the nil and you know you have to play uh gm and, and, and there wasn't there's no point in my life in my college professional life i never thought i would be the head coach in a college and the gm which is a horrific uh combination uh, there's a reason why the nba doesn't do that the uh they have a gm negotiates the contracts and the salary cap and they got a coach that coaches the team um i i just don't think it's very uh healthy environment for a coach to be involved in negotiation when you have to coach the players. And so um, there's that too, when it comes to decide who you want to recruit and do they fit, do they fit academically, do they fit as a person? And is it reasonable what their demand, what their salary demand is? And there's a lot of um, kind of bullshit that you got to cut through. Uh, Lucy just panicked because I swore, um, you know, because there's a lot of lying, a lot of liars poker. Um, you know, it's it's different. Um, but I always had a plan, you know, to go get the best players. Um, yeah, we we missed on some, but everybody does. You know, this is the first year since I've been here that we've had a player visit in the spring that didn't sign. We've been perfect up until this year. Uh, we missed on two. And so it happens, um, you know, but, you know, let's be honest. Let's just be honest. Who was the best recruit for us? The top recruit was Hunter. It wasn't anybody in the portal. Nobody in the portal is better than Hunter, okay? And I knew that, so I was going to be patient. And I was going to go all the way through until I heard either yes or no. So you just build around it. I did have other people that I had an eye on if he decided to go. Um, but I wasn't going to execute that plan until I got the final final answer from him, his agent, and his family. Cam? Good morning, Steve. Um, on the retention side of things, obviously you kept Hunter, you keep Cam, you keep Triple M, you keep Afton, you know, how much of that is, you know, what is being built at Wake Forest? How much of that is, you know, roll the quad kind of playing a role and really kind of making sure they're compensated, right? And also, do you think you with this roster, I think it's 11 right now, is that where you think you're going to stay at for the rest of the year? Or do you think you're going to try to find someone else? Yeah. Well, I think they all go hand in hand, uh, Cam. You know, obviously, uh, roll the quad is important. It's, it's uh you know, NIL is important in these decisions on top of a lot of other things. Um, playing time is really important for people in the portal. Um, style of play. I wish I could tell you academics. I'm trying to flip it. I'm the, I'm the one voice. I'm trying to – I'm pushing it every time I'm in front of them. Um, but, yeah, I think those things, you know – they all kind of go, they, they all kind of go hand in hand. You know, you got to have them all, you got to check all those boxes to have the best opportunity, you know, to get a good player. I forget what the other part was. What was it? Oh, just if you were going to, are you planning on staying oh. at 11 scholarships or do you yeah. think you're going to add a little more? Well, I've always believed that you recruit 365 days or days of the year. Um, I think we have to be intentional and strategic in 12 and 13, uh, it's probably not going to be a great opportunity to play. Um, my guess is that um, that we'll uh, at least sign one more. I actually have a commitment, just haven't announced it, um, from a player that um, is going to be a developmental player. And, um, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. Um, will I use 13? I will if it's right. But, you know, we have 11 guys that expect to play. And so, um, and I do think they're all capable of playing. And so it's, um, you know, do you want to invest time and money into players that are going to just leave? That doesn't make any sense to me unless they commit to a developmental situation before they come, because you're not playing 13 guys. It's just not, it's just not possible. Um, you know, and so 
Um, we'll see. Like I said, we're going to be at 12 here pretty quick. And then uh, 13 could come. There might be guys that reclass in the summer. Who knows? Uh, we'll continue to recruit the entire time uh, up until the beginning of school. David Teal. Steve, how beneficial was the previous relationship with Devin and his family when you went to recruit him this time? And yeah. was was there, is there any uh, relationship between him and Efton, given their yeah. shared Richmond roots? Good question, Dave. You know, um, I guess it's a great example in life why you don't burn bridges, right? I've always been very conscientious of that in recruiting. Cause you're not, you're going to lose more than you get. You just are. And so um, as much as it hurts when they go somewhere else, I've, I've always taken the high road in that. I maybe one time in my life have burnt the bridge. Um, but we had a tremendous relationship with, with Devin, his brother, his mom, his grandmother. They were down here a lot. They loved, we had a really good connection. His mom uh, actually texted me a couple of times during after my wife had a stroke to check on Janetta. Um, and so that made it very comfortable and very easy. Um, as soon as he, when he went in the portal, they reached out to us. Um, I went to Tuscaloosa with um, BJ and uh, visited with him uh, right after he had his surgery. And um, he didn't even come on a visit, you know, and he just, he committed. He'd already been here. And so, um, yeah, I, him, him and Epton know each other. I don't know. I'm not telling you they're boys, but they are from Richmond, right? And, um, you know, that didn't hurt. You know, Epton's mom, Maria, she's awesome, and she, she's really good with the parents, as is Jessica. You know, uh, Jessica, uh, Hunter's mom was recruiting hard for us even before Hunter decided to come back. And so that's the way you want it. You want your players and your families recruiting for you. And so um, we're, I'm really excited with Devin. I just saw I, – I haven't been here last week when he got here. I was home seeing my mom. And so I couldn't believe how much he's gotten. I mean, he has really gotten stronger. Now, you got to remember, he's been – he was at Alabama for a year and a half. You know, he went at Christmas time of his senior year and red, and, and red shirted and, and practiced and then played this past year. And so um, um, he's really, really matured. Um, he's close. His foot's a lot better. But uh, definitely the relationship, David, uh, paid off um, in, in, in getting him. And I think it's, again, it's an example of just don't burn bridges in recruiting. Josh? I've got a couple, if that's okay. Steve, starting with um, Hunter. You said you were going to go through this till the very end and trying to get him back. In past years, you've, I mean, whether it be Jake or other examples, there have been guys, all ACC caliber players that you didn't get back, um, mm -hmm. your retention efforts. Just how big of a deal do you think this is? And is this the kind of break you think you need in order to make the run that you want? You already talked about the NCAA tournament, for example. Well, it's huge. I mean, first of all, uh, full disclosure, in my 30, this will be 36 years, I don't think I've coached another player, maybe a couple of players that have the, the type of person that he is plus the type of player that he is. He's got talent, NBA talent, and he's a, he's a really good person and a great teammate. And so getting him back is the biggest thing that's happened to me since I've been here in my opinion. Um, you know, um, I, I just think that um, he represents us in a way that, that, that we want to be represented. And, and so, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's looking forward to coming back. I was a little worried about that when I, I didn't, I didn't ever, ever, ever talk to him about coming back. I always encouraged him to do well in his workouts, to, to realize his dream, um, I just, I had, the difference was I just had, um, a great relationship with his parents and him and the agent. And so, and listen, if Hunter had decided to leave, 
I tell you the same thing today, that his agent was incredibly open and honest, Kevin Bradbury, about what was going on all the time. So was his parents, and so was Hunt. And so there was no a game of deception, you know, going on here, which can happen, you know. But he's, um, you know, he, he's he's what you want. I and mean, he, he was our top recruit in, out of the, you know, going into the portal season. You know, it was just a matter of going through the process, which I was going to do. But at the same time, I wasn't trying to recruit him to come back. The best thing I could do was support him. And that's what we did. And then at the end, you know, after all the information, again, he was getting drafted. Okay. And there's no question about that. Um, so most of these guys that, that come back on the, on the 29th, they ain't getting drafted. Okay. He was, he had a tough decision to make. Um, so credit to him and his people, you know, for going through the process and then making a educated decision on what, you know, where he would be and where he should be. And so uh, I'm looking forward to helping him get to where he wants to be. And with that in mind, this is the first time we've caught you since the ACC's did so well in the NCAA tournament. State going to a Final Four, Clemson to the Elite Eight, Duke to the Elite Eight, all teams that you're, you beat last year. Do expectations for next year start at the NCAA tournament, or is there an element of, well, if they can do that, why can't us? I've been saying that since I got here. To be honest with you, Josh. Went, went to the Final Four. I didn't go there, but the year before I went to Wichita State, they went to the Final Four. Uh, Butler's been there a couple times under Brad Stevens, George Mason under Larinaga, Loyola under Porter. Those are mids, so why not? You know, uh, look at NC State. They got on a run late. Kevin did an unbelievable job and got to the Final Four. Good for them. You know, um, Clemson, you know, Brad did – he's so undervalued as a coach, in my opinion, um, publicly, that it's really kind of stupid. Um, he's such a good coach. And he's a really good person, and he's a good voice for our league. He's been around. Um, you know, Duke, Carolina, those guys, they've always – those guys are doing an incredible job. I talk to John a lot. I like him. Um, I'm happy for those teams. Yeah, we want to be there and we can be there. You know, we got to do it. Got to quit, you know, can't talk about it. You got to go do it. But, you know, sometimes it's like, for instance, two opposite seasons. Clemson had an unbelievable non conference, just an okay conference, got in the tournament, went to the Elite Eight. NC State didn't have such a great season up until the end and then got hot and got in there and looked to the Final Four. So you got to keep going. Right. You got to keep plugging. And um, our league's going to be a lot better, in my opinion. I think there are a lot of good players in our league. And so uh, we'll have a lot of opportunities to uh, to improve our profile. I think the biggest key is not being on the bubble, but being off the bubble. You don't get like everybody was talking about the Big 12 this year, but in their non-conference schedule. But the, the reason why it really wasn't exposed, because all those teams have played themselves in to to seeds early and so they don't get exposed to resumes like if you get on that bubble they'll pick anything to knock you out and so i think the whole key too is get off the bubble man get in and so um yeah I, i'm excited about our team i like where we're at i thought we retained our best players and i thought that we really 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 added to our depth with uh, athleticism uh competitiveness um, ability, and I just feel like we'll be a lot deeper team than what we've been. All right, Les. Steve, along those lines, that's almost perfect segue into my question. It seems like when you look at some of the talent you added, especially in the middle, guys that are going to play in the post, it looks like you added some athleticism, some oh, yeah. strength, and perhaps a little bit more toughness maybe than what we've seen from Wake Forest teams the last couple of years. Was that intentional? Yeah, no question. I mean, I think every year you got to look at your team and it's like putting a puzzle together, Les. You try to figure out what pieces you have and what pieces that you need to add. And, yeah, we, you know, we had some guys leave, you know, and um, I didn't force anybody to leave, but those were decisions that are individual decisions that are made. So once those are made, 
then you get in there and you try to upgrade. And I think we did. Um, we upgraded. And so um, I think that we, I wanted more athleticism. Um, I wanted to be a little tougher. Um, now, you know, those things you can, we'll see as we go, you know, how those things play out. But, um, you know, like we just got some guys that want to go compete. And uh, we had a lot of moments where, um, you know, we had opportunities to win games late and didn't. And so we got to change that mentality. You know, you do that with guys that are coming back now, have been through it. You recruited some guys that are tougher and, and have maybe been through it. And then you just build that chemistry, you know, as you go. Uh, we got to do better as coaches, which we're always, you know, trying to do. I, I do think that, you know, I wrote this down um, somewhere here. I thought last year um, we shot way too many non-rim twos. Um, even though most of those were in the lane, but they were long, not, 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 uh, long twos, but just not the right ones. Too many. We didn't take enough threes. Um, we were 200th in the country in three point volume, but we were eighth in the country in three point field goal percentage. So we didn't take enough. We need to play faster. We're 20th in the country in transition and scoring efficiency last year. Got to play faster. I think mean, we're bottom 100 in the assist rate. Okay. Now, partly that style of play and personnel. Uh, we had a lot of guys that could, you know, create their own shot, which you got to have in this level. But the ball still got to move. Um, when we had a higher assist rate, we had our best offensive performances. And we were one, top 25 in the country, I believe, in offensive efficiency. It's not like we were bad. Um, but we had a 55% assist rate in our top seven offensive performances. And we had 42% assist rate and our seven worst. So the ball's got to move more, uh, in my opinion, you know, for us to to get to where we want to be. I think that um, Hunter ha or Hunter and Parker are really good at that, and, and Cam, uh, moving the ball and the guys that we've signed. And so uh, I feel a little bit better about that, but that's something that, I mean, I think we definitely got to keep an eye on. Because, yeah, we were in the – in Kemp Hall, we were 25th in the country offensive efficiency and 59th in defense. And so, you know, analytically, you know, we had a pretty darn good year, but we didn't get to where we wanted to be. Um, you know, I think, like you said, we were five and four against the field and we beat three of the teams in the eight and really four, if you count the charity game against Alabama. And so, uh, you know, we're not far off, you know, we just, we got to get there and that's part of it. Essex. Coach, in the, the years since you've been in Winston-Salem, it felt, it's felt like the the fandom for, for Wake is starting to come back, especially you look at last year, like the Duke yeah. game, the tie-dye nation, some of the T-shirt stuff, all that. It, it's really starting to grow. And, and so what do you just have to say kind of to the, the, the fans and, and the generalized, um, I guess, supporters of the team about what's coming up next season and trying to just continue that growth of the, the fandom coming back for games? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you just said it, you know, we, you just answered the question for me, like go buy your tickets now because this is going to be a fun team to, to watch again. You got guys back that you have a relationship with, which I understand in this, in this uh, climate, it's, it's harder and harder, right. To keep guys. And so, uh, but we have three starters returning that we have, that our fans know and love and have a relationship with, you know, um, we're going to continue to, to climb, you know, and, and we have, and so, you know, be excited for the season as much as we are. And I know people are, I mean, I'm out enough to, to understand that. I mean, you think about this when we lost to Georgia at home in the NIT, that was my first non-conference uh, home game loss since I've been the head coach here. And so we have won at home. We're 48 and seven at home over the past three years. And so part of that, you're right, Essex, is us, we have to do our job, and then the fans have to show up, and they have. They have. And and our, our players, um, they they see it. And it's a we've turned this place into a really, really hard place to play. And we got to continue uh, on that path. And I know people were excited when, uh, you know, Cam came back. For, Cam's a four-year guy. You know, Efton's back, and now Hunt, Parker, 
you know, Marcus and then the players that we've added, I think there's a, there is, um, you know, a buzz around our program and we need to continue to build on that until we get to November. And then, sorry, just if I can jump in, you mentioned the word buzz. How do you, if there's, it's starting to seem like there might be a little more national buzz about the team going into the season, as opposed to years prior. Is -hmm. there any different way of handling that this season or things you're kind of telling the team or is it just business as usual? I think you embrace it right now. Uh, I think that's good publicity for us. It helps our recruiting. Um, we doesn't hurt it. Um, you know, I, I don't, I think right now Essex, you know, you just let it happen. I don't, I'm not going to address it with the players, but you know, like a year ago, I could feel in February the pressure on some of our players was starting to build with the with the uh, pressure of being on the bubble, and I really tried hard to alleviate that from some of them. They didn't handle it very well. And so, um, you know, if we get to that point, we get in practice, and I'm like, these guys are complacent, which I'm probably not ever going to allow that to happen, but maybe I address it then. But I've always felt like in the summer and the fall, if you get that type of – Buzz, it's good for your program, you know, and and look where we've come. And, and, you know, when I got here, nobody was talking, not in a good way they were talking about us, but talking about us in a really good way now. And so I think we build on it, embrace it, and then when the season comes, you got to produce. We'll go ahead and wrap up with Cam. Steve, with Omaha, you know, how important is it that he has you know, a guy like Hunter – right there with them that you know he can show you that he can you can do this and also with you know cam and Efton and parker you know what are their expectations in terms of like helping lead this team uh you know that's another exciting thing about our team is i have three proven players proven leaders returning um we won't have to vote for captains because we already have them you know with those three cam and hunt and, and Efton. And so uh, I think those things are really, really important. I think even Trayvon being a senior can, can, can lead like that. Um, you know, Omaha has got a, a contagious kind of personality. He's, um, he's a guy that likes people and um, he'll listen to um, what those guys have to say. They hung out a little bit on their visit. Uh, Hunter didn't because Hunter wasn't here, but everybody else was here. And so there's a little bit of relationship there, but, you know, he's hungry. You know, he's like, he's like, uh, like Hunter in that respect. He's got a chip on his shoulder. I I like that. I like for my players to have a chip on the shoulder, something to prove. And so um, all of that will be really, really important. You know, I plan on meeting with, um, in you know, with Hunter and Cam and, and Epton um, at least maybe once a week, every two weeks during the year, just to get the heartbeat of the team and what's going on and to try to even help us even more because those guys, I value their opinion. And so um, I think all those things will help, not just Omaha, but, you know, Ty and Churchill and, and Devin and, and Juke and everybody else on the team. And so, um, yeah, I, you know, I think one of the things with Omaha too is he, he was just too big when I saw him, you know, on his visit, I just thought he got, he bulked up too much and he's leaned out even uh, to a little bit now and it'll be even more to regain his, uh, I don't know, his explosiveness. Um, the things that I saw when I saw him play in high school and I saw him play, obviously he's from where I'm from, um, but I saw him play in AAU and I was blown away with his ability. And, and uh, I was sitting there with some really high major coaches you know, watching him play. And so I uh, look forward to him, you know, getting healthy, uh, getting back to being uh, the explosive and type of player, playing with confidence. I think that's a big thing in the portal, you know, is everybody like, why did we have success? Well, I think we give our players confidence and then we understand that uh, who we are and how we play and we plug them in pretty good. And But giving those kids confidence is really important. And, and so, I, I, you know, giving him confidence in Devin and Churchill and Ty and all the juke, giving them confidence, teaching them how to play, but not having them look over their shoulder all the time is really, really important. 
All right. Anything else for coach? You know, I wrote this down. Um, we did finish 12 and eight, I think against the net top 100, 103, you know, on a historical perspective. And this is something that, you know, I've, I've been studying a little bit, you know, Wake Forest has made the, has made 15 NCAA tournaments since 1991. The past three years, our ACC regular season winning percentage has been equal to or better than nine of the 15 teams that appeared in the NCAA tournament since 1991. And so it just kind of goes to show you, you know, you got to, you got to win, you got to win the right games. You got to, you know, the metrics have changed. We've studied that really hard. I think we did a good job with that this year. It's past year and this year. And so uh, we'll continue to, you know, to evolve in that, in that area uh, as well. I do think we have a very, uh, a very, really good roster. I think it's a very versatile roster. I think we got players that can play multiple positions. That was probably another thing in the portal that we were looking for, to be honest, was versatility and guys that can play up and down the roster. And so it should be a, it's going to be a fun summer, which starts a week from today. And then, uh, you know, we got, 16 weeks in the fall before we play. And so uh, we are going to Alabama to play in a charity game or I'll, you don't even, I don't even think you have to call it that anymore. And then we've got uh, one more, we got to get a scrimmage with, and that'll be here. All right. That'll do it. Thank you. Thanks coach. Yep. Thanks coach.